it's a shame you can't be here because it's a very nice grey sort of atmospheric day with the birds hopping over. Um, but this is going to be a, a relatively short video just because I'm a bit snowed under with work and things at the moment, but I'll do a few longish ones in the, in the near future. Um, and it's just to clarify a bit of terminology that's thrown around a lot uh, in relation to Germanic linguistics, but it's not always completely clear what it means. And that is I umlaut as it applies to English. So uh, I, I think there are a few, few videos covering this uh, in, in other old Germanic languages as well, but this is, this is going to be specifically focusing on Old English. Most English plurals nowadays are formed by adding an ending to the root word. So phone and phones, table and tables, book and books and so on. And the same thing was the case in Old English, but there were more potential endings depending on case and also what form the noun had taken in earlier stages of the language. Um, but there are also words where you mark the plural by changing the vowel in the word. And we see one example in our little friend here. This is a mouse, but two of them would be mice. Instead of adding an ending, you just change the vowel to make the plural. And that applies to words like goose and geese, man and men, and it also applies in other situations where it's not a plural distinction, like old and elder. And you get this kind of pattern throughout the Germanic languages, but you don't find this kind of vowel alternation when you go beyond uh, the Germanic languages to something like Latin. Latin has the word mus, but the plural mores, and you can see that the u stays the same in the singular and the plural. And if you look at the word for goose, you have aser, and is, and this is actually cognate with the English word goose. The R here is cognate with the U in goose, but there's no vowel alternation between the singular and the plural in Latin. It's very important to remember English didn't get these words from Latin, and Latin didn't get them from the Germanic languages. They've inherited them from common ancestors, and you have lots of that kind of evidence in other Indo-European languages with, again, no alternation between the singular and the plural. So that's good evidence that this vowel alternation is a Germanic thing. So now we look to an older stage of English, Proto-Germanic, spoken about 2,000 years ago. In the nominative case in Proto-Germanic, you had mus and musis, one mus, many musis. And for goose, you had one rans and many ranses. And neither of those have that, vo uh, that vowel alternation. They're pretty much the equivalent of mouse, mouses, goose, gooses. And some of you will very wisely point out well, Proto-Germanic is reconstructed by linguists, so if, if, if all of the modern Germanic languages have this vowel alternation between singular and plural, why don't we reconstruct it in Proto-Germanic? And that's a very good question, and the answer is because not all attested Germanic languages have this vowel alternation. So Gothic doesn't seem to have I umlaut. Gothic is the earliest written Germanic language, and it, if it didn't have this vowel alternation, then we have two options. Either this vowel alternation appeared after Gothic split off from the rest of the languages, or Gothic had a massive regularization that neutralized all these vowel alternations at once. And from what we know about language development in general, the first option is a lot more likely. But that still doesn't explain what caused these vowel alternations. The answer is a linguistic process called assimilation. Sometimes sounds change to become more like sounds that are near them. So take this word. In Southern English, it used to be pronounced du, du, but over the last 60 years or so, the y has assimilated to the d in front of it and become j, which is a post-alveolar sound that's closer to d. So du has become ju. And this happened with vowels in the early Germanic languages. So in the plural mousis, the u sound assimilated to the e by fronting, moving further forward in the mouth. But it retained the lip rounding of u, so that it was mousis, mousis. So you then have one mousse, many mousis. The same thing happened with the other vowels, and over time these unstressed endings are reduced and eroded away. But it didn't really matter because you could still tell the difference between the singular and the plural forms based on the vowel difference, just like you can today. So then by the time of Old English, you had one moose, many moose, one goose, many goose. And later in the Old English period, e uh, unrounded in most dialects, leaving e, eh, which made the difference even more obvious, one goose, many geese. And later still, the same thing happened with u. It unrounded to e, leaving mus and mis. And by unrounded, I mean the lips stopped being rounded when people were saying the vowels. So by this point, these vowel alterations were standard in English, and then the great vowel shift in the sort of 13, 14, 1500s changed them to mouse and mice, goose and geese. And that also accounts for why the plural of moose isn't meese, because the word moose is a loan word that came into English after those vowel alternations were already set. So it just took the regular ending, moose, mooses. There are some words that used to have i umlaut plurals, but don't anymore because they became regularised and people just started using the normal plural ending. 
and some of those survived until recently in dialects. So for example, one cow, many kai. In most dialects that's been regularised to one cow, many cows, although I'm sure kai is still a plural in some areas. One interesting example is the word book. So nowadays it's one book, many books. But in Old English this had I umlaut. One bork, many bitch. And you'll notice that the k turns into a ch in the plural, bork, bitch because of a change called palatalization that affected the k sound wherever it occurred around the vowels e, e, or a in Old English. So if that had survived into modern English, it would be one book, many beach. That may or may not be related to the name of the beech tree, nobody's completely sure. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, sorry if the winds had any effect on the, uh, the noise, the sound, uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.